We established that in coordinate geometry, if you want to describe a point, a single spot somewhere on the Cartesian plane, if you want to describe a spot, that's cool. Do you want to come around this way, Ray? Thanks. You want to describe a point, you use coordinates. For example, 3, 4. They're called coordinates because you always have to have two of them together. That's when you see the word co together, like cooperate or co interior uh, or co dependent. You've got two things, they have to come together. The three in this case would be the x value, right? That's where you are horizontally, which makes the four the y value, which is where you are vertically. Points, coordinates. <laughs> but if you want a whole bunch of points, a collection of points that are all on a line, you don't use coordinates anymore, you use an equation. And this is an example of one. You've got an x, you've got a y in there, this is going to be a straight line. Okay? Now, we know about gradient when we talk about points, we learn about y-intercepts. What does a y-intercept mean? If you've got a line, its y-intercept is what? How would you describe that? Yeah, Isabel. Well, the line goes through the y-axis. Yeah, this line is going to hit the y-axis somewhere. That is where it does it. Okay. So how do we go about answering this question? I'm going to suggest, to start with, we're going to think about just drawing a rough picture of this thing. Okay. What we looked at earlier was, if you want to draw a rough picture, probably the best way to go is actually to find out your x and y intercepts. So for instance, <laughs> for the x intercept, what do we do to this equation to find the x intercept? I'm going to let something equal something else. Fantastic. You might remember I pointed this out. It's a bit weird. You want to find the x intercept. So you let y equal zero. Can someone remember, remind me why that is? Why that why? is? Uh, yeah. Someone else, someone hasn't said anything yet. Can you tell me why, really? Can you tell me the reason for this and this being different letters? What's going on? Yeah, Arif. Because you're on the x-axis, you're not going off at all. Okay, fantastic. So in fact, you may like to draw on the side here your Cartesian plane. I'm about to find the x-intercept. This is the x-axis. Everywhere along the x-axis, you haven't gone up, you haven't gone down. That means vertically, you're at zero. Every single spot on the x-axis has y equals zero. So let's try that. I've got my equation here. 5x minus 2y plus 10. I'm going to substitute in y equals zero. 5x minus 0 plus 10 equals 0. How do you feel about the substitution? Is that looking good, okay? Yeah. What can I do with this? Um, I want x's on, the, on their own, and there's this 10 hanging out here. What am I going to do to both sides? Can I get that way? Can I subtract? So now someone tell me the next line. Divide, Divide by, five. by 5, which gives me... Okay, so negative 2 x equals negative 2, I can go to my Cartesian plane and I can go 1, 2, that's an intercept. So I'm going to put a, a bit of an x there, so I know I'm going to go through there. I found the x-intercept, so now the other thing I need to find is... Cool, let's do that. To find that, instead of letting y equal 0, I let x equal 0. Have a look, what's going to happen? Uh, 0 minus 2y plus 10. I'm going to do the same thing with that 10. I'm going to subtract it from both sides. And now what? Divide. Divide by... Five. 2. two. two. I can divide by 2, but I might as well divide by negative 2. That'll get me straight to the answer in one step. So if I divide by negative 2, five. you just get positive 5 over there. The negatives cancel. So again, I'm going to come back to my diagram. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where I'm going through. Okay. So I've actually answered part of the question here. Y intercept. I've just found that. It's 5. So I might just write that there. We've got that answer now. But to get to the gradient, I'm just going to quickly draw the, the actual line by drawing the dots. So that's what it looks like. Okay. Put your pins down for a moment. 
how can I use this to help me find gradient? Do you see, conveniently, there's a right angle triangle in there which has a rise over run in it. Do you see it? Do you see it? If I join here and here, there's a right angle triangle. The axes are always perpendicular, right? So, how do I use this triangle to help me? This is rise over here, right? What's the length? It's five, because that's what the coordinate is. And I'm going up, right? So it's not negative or anything like that. What about the run? Now, look carefully. I'm trying to read from left to right, okay? So even though this coordinate is negative two, the length here is just two. Yeah? So now I can say, therefore, gradient is rise over run. So that's five over two, or two and a half, whichever you feel more comfortable writing. Okay? So that's all fine. It's correct. But last lesson, I clued you into the fact that if you want gradient and y-intercepts, and you've got the equation of a line, you can go straight there. No drawings required if you get your line into slope-intercept <coughs> form. Does anyone remember what slope-intercept form is? I'll give you a clue. It starts with y equals. Y equals? Yeah, very good. The m, that's the slope, the gradient. That's the letter we chose. Uh, B, I, I don't know why they chose B, but whatever. It's a convention that's pretty consistent across people. If I can change this guy to look like this, then I can skip all of this work. I can go straight to the gradient and y intercept. So now, just over here or underneath if you're still writing, I'm going to start with that equation. Okay? 5x minus 2y plus 10 equals 0. And my job now is to rearrange this equation so it looks like this. This form will just tell me straight away what the gradient and y-intercept are. Oh. y equals mx plus b. The subject of the equation is y. That's the thing I want to get by itself. So when you look at this, I've got all this stuff over here on the left. I need to get some stuff from the left over to the right. Which stuff do I need to get rid of? Yeah, there's a 5x and a 10. So what should I do to both sides? I should subtract, right? I'm going to say this again. It's not just that I'm moving them over there, because they're not going to be 5x plus 10 over there, are they? They're going to be minus 5x minus 10. Okay, so let's write that. This minus 2y, I haven't touched it at all. It's still there. Over here, I've got minus 5x minus 10. Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't touched the minus 2y, yeah. it stayed on the left. Yeah. yeah. All good. Okay. Now, I only need to do one more thing to this line to turn it into this. I don't want the minus 2y, I just want y. So what will I do to both sides? I'll divide by negative 2, just like I did over here. It's the same deal, right? So I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. Okay, and just watch out. So this is going to become minus 5x on negative 2. Yeah? Minus 10 on negative 2. I've divided everything. Don't miss out anything. Equals. Now, I just want to tidy this up a little bit. I've already done most of the legwork. I just want to make it look neater. Negative 5, negative 2. There's negatives on the top and the bottom. What can I do with those guys? I can cancel them. And I'm going to write the 5 over 2 by itself, just like the m is by itself over there. x. Is that alright? Yeah. So you don't have to. You can write that as 5x on 2 if you like. But this just kind of puts right up front center. That's the thing that I want out the front. That's the coefficient. It's not a mixed numeral. It's 5 over 2 times x. Uh, what happens over here? Again, the negatives cancel, don't they? Leaving you with plus 5. Okay, now I want you to compare that amount of work with this amount of work. We had to like do both intercepts, we had to get a drawing, we had to think about this, and then we got an answer, okay? Clearly this is much more efficient if you know what you're doing, if you know where you're going, okay? Question? So wait, the Y is Y intercept, right? And then... The B is the Y intercept. Okay, and the Look, do you see, we actually, we worked this out, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm just reading off, look, here is M. This is the gradient or the slope, right? And then where's the y-intercept? It's over here. We already found it, so this is just verifying that we got it right. This is the y-intercept. 
Okay, which is worth labeling onto where you've written that equation. Okay. Now, this form doesn't give you the x intercept. There's other forms we'll get to yeah. for those. But what this hands to you is okay, now if I gave you some other random equation, right? If I said to you y equals negative 4x plus 2. You don't need to find any x intercept, y intercept, and go through all that legwork. You can already straight away say the gradient is negative 4. So it's, uh, it's negative, that means it's going down. And the 4 tells you it's going pretty steep, right? It's dropping like a rock. And what does that tell you? The y intercept will be on my graph, which I'm just going to hijack over here, 2, right? So this looks, looks something like, uh, we said it's quite steep, right? Something like that. There you go, that'd be y equals minus 4x plus 2. You can look at this and you can read the features directly off it, which is why we call it slope intercept form.